The stove is the lifeline of your kitchen. We all need a place to cook. Welcome to KMD's Homestead. I'm Donna. Today on this video, I'm going to show a simple way to make a repair to your stove. Now, my stove has been uh, out of commission, more or less, since a few days before Christmas. These two large burners on the front have not functioned, and I've only had the two small burners on the back to be able to use. And that uh, has created a lot of problems for my uh, cooking abilities and I've had trouble since before Christmas these burners they actually come on but they rage at super high temperature and burn absolutely everything I went shopping to try to find a new stove because my stove is 17 years old it's a Samsung but it's in great shape other than those burners. It's a glass top as well. I went shopping thinking that I was going to get a new stove because of the age of this one. I thought, uh, me and my husband both thought, well, you know, it is 17 years old. Maybe it's time to replace it. We went shopping and no, 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 no. Too much money, not in the budget. And the ones that I looked at that I thought, well, okay, you know, we can get it, but I didn't like those stoves. They had plastic knobs. They had um, nothing appealing to me. I did not like what I was looking at. There are new stoves who have some great functions. They now come with air fryers in the oven. There's all kinds of neat features. That didn't appeal to me because I have a nice air fryer. I have a proofing section on my stove for making bread. Honestly, most of the time I don't use it. I proof my bread on the counter. So I felt like I did not need all those fancy functions when I actually love this stove. I keep messing up my towel. I actually love this stove. It has plenty of nice functions. It's sturdy. It's Samsung. And so I decided I'm going to repair this one. Now, to be honest, this is not the first time. This will be, I think, about the third time that these elements have gone out on the front. And I know exactly why. If you can, like canning foods, uh, preserving, processing, you really should not do it on a glass top stove. And I know this, but I proceeded anyways. I was willing to take that gamble. The weight of those pots is just too much. And eventually, it will foul up the uh, regulator that regulates those burners. So know that moving forward, if you are processing food in canning jars in a water bath canner or a pressure canner you will end up messing these up i'm okay with that because over the 17 years this will be the third or fourth time i've lost track about every four to five maybe even longer six years i've had to put a regulator on this side and this side I think I've done it twice on this side, but only once on this side. But at the price of the regulator, it has been worth it to me. Not that I want to just keep throwing money at this stove, but if I can replace and repair things on this stove and get more life out of it, that's what I want to do. I don't want to spend over a thousand dollars on a stove that I don't like or that I don't need. So. I bought my parts at uh, Amazon, and for my stove personally, I spent with tax $49 for each side. Both sides had to be, has, need to be replaced. 
and my cost for this particular stove. Now, if you, anybody out there has this same problem where your um, temperature, either they don't work at all or they go on high only and won't turn down, chances are it's probably the temperature regulator. Each stove is going to be different depending on the make and model and the brand, of course. And some may cost more, some is going to cost a lot less. It just depends. But if you're interested, it is simple to do. For mine, I just have to take the back cover off and, and get to uh, the back of the particular the back of the particular um, knob and it is just like plug and play. It has prongs and you just plug it in. There's no wiring. So that's what I'm going to do today and I'm going to put it on video because there may be somebody out there watching this who's having trouble with their uh, heating elements and I just want to show how simple a fix it is without spending over a thousand dollars or, or even two when we went shopping stoves were you know from a thousand all the way up to three thousand in that range now they go higher of course but that's going to be a special order so let me get my tools i'm going to pull my stove out and i'm going to hit the breaker and turn it off there because i don't feel like bending down and that plug in the wall is super hard to get out so i'm just going to flip it at the breaker and turn all the power off and I'll be right back. These are the parts. I got two, one for each side and it takes the same one. It doesn't matter which side is what, left or right. This is what the knob goes on. This goes through the front of the stove. Actually, I've got the stove over here. It goes through the front of the stove and then you have a harness that plugs in to the back of this. And it's that simple. The first thing I need to do is take the cover off the back. There's yucky on the back of the stove. Please don't judge me. It's yucky because I use it and I haven't cleaned it in a while. I actually do pull my stove, refrigerator, washer, and dryer out probably once a year. And give them a good, you know, wash down or dusting or whatever is necessary but I usually do that um, I thought I did it when we put the stove back in after the kitchen was remodeled but I guess I didn't but anyways don't judge me so I'm going to go ahead and just take all of the screws off of the back now I might end up in the uh, yeah if I block the camera, just give me a minute. I'm going to actually get a bone. And put all these screws in this bowl. You don't need to have a repairman to do this. The name of the game is to save money, right? If it is something that you can safely do yourself, then that is what needs to be done in my tiny little opinion. I always try to do repairs myself, uh, me or myself and my husband or him, but between the two of us, we always try to fix something first if we know that is it that it is within our ability. We don't do it if it's something we're going to mess up or is too dangerous for us, but um, we don't like, we don't like spending money, you know, we need the money for our homestead or animals and, you know, for our bank account. <laughs> okay, so the two, um, switches that are the problem child are the two front ones. You have to take your knob off of the front and there are screws holding the knob, uh, holding the switch on the front, so I've got to take those out.
and that released that. Okay, this one, it just slides out. Now, it's not a 100% plug-and-play style like you would just plug something, you know, into the computer. You do have to do some plugging, but you don't have to do any wiring. Let me move this back just a little. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to orient this switch in the same way that it is in the stove. And in this case, I've got three wires here on the right-hand side, and there are two on the left, and there's two on the bottom. And I'm just going to replace those in the same order as they are on the stove. So I have the switch in the correct position, and I'm just going to take my needle nose pliers and pull these switches or one wire at a time off. It's important, I feel, to do one wire at a time. Now both of those are tight and I can put my knob back on. Now, that was pretty simple. A few screws on the back cover, replacing the wires one at a time in the same position as the old switch. And that's all there is. Now, I will tell you this. If it doesn't work, this video won't see the light of day. <laughs> but I'm sure it's going to work because I've done this before. But what I did notice when I pulled it out, one of my legs must have come off. So now I'm going to have to deal with that. I will fix that. And um, I am going to clean up the yucky on the back of my stove and get it put back in the hole. Here's a little trick. If you're doing this by yourself and you have to push your stove back to the wall, you know that cord back there gets, uh, you know, in a bind and it's hard to push it back. Tie the string. It's not just a flimsy string. It is a piece of twine. And I tied it on that cord, and I'm holding that cord up in the air so that when I push my stove back, and it is a very tight fit. All right, girls, don't start. I've got this cord up in the air so that it does not bind. Now that I've got it all put back together and put back in the slot, I am going to go turn my breaker on. Okay, the breaker is on. The first thing I want to do is set my clock and I'm going to set it by the table. Okay, now 
now the big test is going to be will it work I want to turn it down to low as long as this outer ring does not blaze in red I'll know that it's working slightly warm I heard the thermostat kick in so that's going to raise it raise it up a little higher now it's glowing and it's coming on and going off like it's supposed to it wouldn't do that before I think it's going to work. And the biggest thing is, can I turn it down to low? Yep, the red ring went off. And we'll go up to high. It's super fast. And we are at high. I don't know if you can see the red glow on the camera, but it's glowing red. I didn't have high. It wouldn't come on high. However, on the lower numbers, it would come on high. So now I'm going back down to low. And it went down immediately. And the interior ring, because there's two rings here, that wouldn't go down either. It was both elements, the inside element and the outside element. And that's down on low. Let's see if I can turn it up. Oh yeah, that's coming up. And that's on high as well. That's great. Now let me try this one. This one is on high and the outer ring is glowing bright red. It went down immediately. down to low. I burned things on low. I mean, no matter what position, it blazed outrageous uh, heat. That one's still putting out heat. Now let's go to the inside. And bring it up. It's coming up fast. Oh yeah. That is going to work. I'm happy. Now I have my stove fully functioning which means I will get busy doing some more canning jobs. Yes, I am going to put those heavy canners on my stove. And if the switch goes out again, I'll replace a few more times before we get a new stove. But I like my stove, and it was just cheap to put a $42 switch, not counting tax, onto each side instead of us spending over a 1000 the lowest priced was a thousand and that's not a high grade stove so i'm happy with this i'll do it a, another couple of times and i'm not going to be afraid to do my canning jobs which is what i need to do because i'm out of chili i'm out of spaghetti sauce and i'm out of pizza sauce and i'm ready to get some of that jarred back up and put on our pantry shelf so that when we want to make those items i don't have to stand in here and cook all day they're ready-made in a jar. Well, I hope this was helpful, informative, 
or just plain old interesting for you if you didn't have a stove that needed to be repaired. If you do, and I actually have a friend right down the street who said she was having the same problem with her stove, the burner. She's got one burner that is out of whack. So I just want to let anybody who is watching know that there is an inexpensive fix. You don't have to throw your stove in the garbage or the landfill or the dumpster or wherever you would put it if you like your stove and if you feel it is worth repairing because these things behind these knobs, the temperature regulator, that's a common thing. They go out, but so many people didn't realize it was actually affordable to replace and easy enough to do yourself. It's not affordable if you hire somebody to come in here, they're gonna charge you a minimal uh, labor fee just to pull up in your driveway. Then they're gonna charge you a labor fee as if they had to rebuild the whole entire stove. And then you're gonna get a markup on the part. You can do this yourself. It is not hard. It is not rocket science. So there you go. Let me know in the comment section if you've had a stove you've thrown out because of this or if you have a stove that you need to do the same thing. Now, keep in mind, every stove, brand, make and model, the price is gonna be different. And if it's kind of new, uh, not that old, sometimes parts are not available after market and on Amazon. You might have, I think the very first time that I did this, I actually had to buy my parts from Samsung. And I had to wait like three or four weeks for that part to come in and it was kind of expensive. I think I paid close to $100 for the first, which was this one. The first burner I had to fix, I think was close to $100. Prices go down, the older the product gets and the more common the problem is as well. But I would say if you need to do it, find your mate, your model, all the information you can get off of the back of the stove. There's going to be a little metal tag back there somewhere and give you that information. Do a search and find your parts. It's easy to do. Okay, I am going to get off of here. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and hit the like button. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, I hope you will uh, consider subscribing because there's more videos to come. Y'all have a great day. Bye-bye.